Hi, I'm Mitch Shoemaker, and today is day 88 of my doing 100 days of YouTube videos and focusing on today. I'm sorry, I've got my phone plugged into my charger, and I'm trying to figure out how to hold it and see the light behind me. I was like, ah, oh, it's blinding me. Actually, it's probably blinding you, so it's blurring me. But anyway, I apologize. I will probably move this around a little bit um, today. I feel like I'm sideways now. Not very good at holding my phone, but it's plugged into my charger because my battery's dying, and I really want to do my video so I could just go to sleep. But my battery's dying because I was talking to my friend on the phone for like hours and hours, and then her phone died, and then she called me back, and then her phone died, and then she called me back, and somehow my phone didn't die that whole time, which is nice, except that now it's you know too low to do a video. Um, anyway, but. I'm glad that my friend called because the end of the call got me talking to her about some other stuff um, uh, that I needed to hear for myself and kind of giving me some ideas as to what I'm going to do for my next 100 days. Um, probably something that I need to do, but I'm not talking about it yet because one, well, I'm not there, and two, I think I'm trying to find an excuse not to do it, but it's probably not going to work. So. <laughs> That's just me, because um, it's it's another scary thing to do for a hundred days. Something I'm not sure how I'm going to come up with um, things to do for a hundred days. But I feel like if that's what God wants me to do, that He will help me come up with um, and see things in my life that I need to see, which has happened with all of these videos that I've been doing. Um, and even today, I was talking to my um, my Al-Anon friend, and um, she just did something for herself that she's very excited about, but she's also freaking out about it. And so she was calling me because she was freaking out about it. And I totally get it because I do the same thing. I do something new, which is good and it's positive, but it's still uncomfortable. Um, and it's, it's hard to adjust to that. It's hard to feel better about it. And talking to her, I had some more little, you know, epiphanies, things that popped out and realizing that sometimes when I do something, um, good, something new, something different that I feel guilty for doing something good. And um, a lot of that goes back to to my childhood because a lot of times I wanted to try something or do something and I was told that I wouldn't like it or I wouldn't be good at it for X, Y, Z reasons, whatever they were. And so I started to believe that, that I couldn't do it because I wouldn't, or I wouldn't like it. So there was no point in, in trying. Um, so I, I mean, that's what I grew up with. And then when I did do stuff that was fun or nice for me, um, I was just thinking about that before this video, that I went and did something uh, with a friend, spent the weekend with her family, went to her family reunion, and it was awesome. And <laughs> it was like what I wish my family was like because everyone seemed to get along and they only got in trouble for not getting along. The kids were allowed to run around and play and, um, and got to just do whatever we wanted to do for an entire weekend. It was awesome. It was so awesome. It was like this giant sleepover. And even though I wasn't related to anybody, I just felt like totally welcome, like I was part of the family and all of these good, positive things. And then I went home and I was in trouble. <laughs> and I mean, I wasn't in trouble for going, but basically I went home and my biological mom pointed out that my brother got stitches. And the first comment that comes out of her mouth when I walk in the door isn't how was your trip or, you know, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I missed you. Any of those things. She's like, see what happens when you're not here. And she's pointing to my brother and my brother's like, oh yeah, I got stitches because my sister threw a toy at his head and whatever. And so it took away that that happy feeling that I had fun, that I was myself, that I was free. And instead it replaced it with that guilt and that shame that because I left, something bad happened. And that has stuck with me the rest of my life, you know, like because I do something nice, something bad happened. And I don't want something bad to happen to someone else or to myself or to whatever. And I know that's not true. I, I realize as an adult that I can honestly say it was not my fault. And even if I'd been home, there's a good chance that my brother and sister still would have fought and he still would have ended up getting stitches. Um, and also, as a teenager, it was not my job or my responsibility to keep my siblings from fighting. That would have been my mom's job and not mine. So she was putting the blame and the responsibility onto me when it wasn't mine to begin with. But I took it and I felt that responsibility and I felt guilty for it. And now, even though I know I'm not responsible for that, 
I still feel guilty for it. So it's still that process of I know something and now how do I internalize it into myself to realize that that's not a true statement and how do I change that? And so um, when I was talking to my friend tonight, we were talking about that and I was just telling her, I'm like, you need to replace the negative thoughts with the positive things. You need to replace the old stories with new stories because she had a traumatic experience with something years ago and now she's having a positive experience. This is a very similar experience. Um, she bought a car. Years ago, she bought a car. She had a really bad reaction and a whole bunch of stuff happened to her uh, because of her uh, disability that she has. And so this time she was freaking out like all of those things were going to happen. And this time, none of those things happened. Like everything went smoothly and it worked and it was great. And so it was just kind of the reminder, just in talking to her, the reminder to myself that just because there was a bad experience doesn't mean that every time you go to buy a car is going to be a bad experience. <laughs> every time you're in a relationship is going to be a bad experience. That you can have a positive experience replace the negative experience. But the problem is, is she does what I do. She gets stuck in the, the PTSD or the old stuff. And, not, and all she's seeing, all she's feeling, she's reacting to the old stuff. And it's like, yes, that old stuff is real. Yes, it's scary to make a big purchase. Yes, it's scary to make a change in life. These are these are things that it, it's okay. It's scary. But it doesn't mean you can't do it because you can do it. <laughs> you did do it. And it's okay. Um, but you have to tell yourself that it's okay. And I was telling her that. You have to tell yourself that it's okay. You have to replace the negative with the positive. Every time you think, oh, did I make a bad choice? I'm like, no, list all the good things and all the reasons why you made the choice in the first place and why it was a good choice. And if you look at it, you're like, okay, that was a bad choice. Then instead of like beating yourself up because it was a bad choice, then it's like, okay, then what can I learn from this choice? What can I do differently? How can I be better in the future? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Um, I'm trying to come up with like positive things instead of negative things to, to replace things in my life and realizing that I, I do that to myself and maybe a lot with my writing and um, my fear of succeeding. And it goes back to being afraid that someone else is going to get hurt or that if I do something happy or positive or that makes me feel good, then somebody else is going to feel bad. And I don't want to be responsible for someone else. <laughs> and also, you know, that goes back to me just sneaking around and doing stuff because I always feel like someone else is going to talk me out of doing it. And the problem is I'm the person that keeps talking myself out of doing it, which is crazy um, because it is that fear. There is that shame. There is that underlying, you know, guilt um, that I was taught. It doesn't mean that it was right. It's, it's misplaced is what it is. And it's... Um, it's just going to take time for me to replace it, to put it in its proper place, proper perspective, and to see that I don't have any reason to feel guilty about writing a story, about sharing my life and my experiences um, from my point of view. And whether other people agree with my point of view or not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's my point of view. It's my experience. It's my feelings. And I can validate myself and my feelings. And I don't need someone else to validate those feelings um, I do need other people to like read my book and help me figure out how to word things in a way that makes sense and not repetitious and whatever, things like that so as far as improving my writing. But I still get to write my stories. I still get to write my book and it's still how I want to do it. And if, you know, and I'm sure there's some readers or some people out there that will read it and totally see and totally agree with what I'm doing. And some people out there are going to be like, no, this is messed up. You know, and some people that have never been in an abusive situation are going to be reading that going, oh my gosh. And some people that have, I realized um, as I was journaling, like my, my mentor that's read my book and she was commenting stuff that, you know, my dad didn't seem as much of a monster as I mentioned that he is in my book because I didn't explain stuff in details. And then she mentioned stuff that her dad did to her. And I was like, you do realize that's abuse, right? But in talking to my Al-Anon friend, she makes excuses for the abuser. She explains it away. She justifies it. And I was like, a lot of people that are in abusive situations do that. It's a survival technique. It's a survival tactic. It's how you can still love the person. It's how you can forgive the person. It's how you can continue to go on. Or you feel like you did something wrong. And I'm like, well, it's my fault. And if I did something better, then this wouldn't happen. And you believe the abuser <laughs> when that happens. And so then you look at other people in those situations and it's like, oh, well, do you want them to respond the same? Because otherwise it's... Um, 
it forces you out of denial, out of that state of denial and makes you see things differently. Um, weird stuff keeps popping up on my phone. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I can't see it. Um, and it doesn't stay up long enough. I'm a slow reader. Anyway, so, I mean, I know from being in an abusive situation and talking to other people that it, it's like that. A lot of times we justify stuff or we go into survival mode and we don't even realize that we are or we're in denial because we can't handle the situation and it's a way to protect ourselves. And um, it's easy for people from the outside looking in saying, this is a bad situation, get out. Or I can't believe you put up with that or you do this. And it's like, yeah, but you've not been in that situation. Or maybe you've been in that situation and you just forgot how <laughs> how much you denied it or how long you stayed in it. It all depends on each individual person. But um, anyway, it's just just random stuff like that that all comes up with talking to my friend. And the, I guess the point to me was realizing as I was telling her, you have to replace the negative with positive. You have to remind yourself all the good reasons why you're making the choice that you're making, why you're doing it. And um, you have to validate yourself and validate your own feelings because it doesn't matter how much everyone else tells you something. Um, you start to believe yourself. You, you believe your, what you tell yourself the most. And if you keep repeating the old stuff and you keep telling yourself you're not good enough or you're making bad choices, you keep repeating the stuff that you've learned your entire life, you're going to just keep having the same responses your entire life. If you want that to change, you have to change how you talk to yourself, how you respond to yourself. And so um, I've been doing a lot of slowly doing that, I guess, over all of these videos. And a lot of things have come to mind that I, I had forgotten about. Even just like today, I'm like, and I've had that story in my head. I've told that story tons of times. Like, it's just horrible. I come home and I feel guilty because I went out and did stuff. And tonight, for the first time, I was remembering going on that weekend with my friend. And it suddenly dawned on me that that was a gift from God. That was an opportunity to see a different way of life and to know that what I was living with wasn't normal. It's not what it's supposed to be. People are supposed to be happy and supposed to play and be supportive and, and teach each other. And, you know, it's supposed to be a completely different life than what I had. And it was a glimpse at something that maybe someday I could have that. And that was just kind of a a nice aha moment for me tonight to realize that I have seen lots of other people and happy relationships and situations that work. And I mean, obviously it's not perfect. Everyday life isn't perfect. I mean, people there made mistakes, got upset a little bit, but it didn't turn into like a violent situation. It didn't turn into a yelling, screaming match. It didn't turn into a hitting and beating each other up match. It didn't turn into everybody bawling and crying. Um, I don't like that my phone keeps popping that up. I don't know what it's telling me. <laughs> Maybe that's why my video keeps turning out sideways. But um, it's just, it's nice to know that there can be loving relationships, people that care about each other, that build each other up, that that lovingly point out that, okay, this isn't how this works. Let's try this a little bit differently. That's okay. You're just learning and allowing me the opportunity to learn and to grow. And that seemed like a much healthier environment, even if it's not perfect than the environment that I was being raised in. And so I'm just, I'm grateful even now to look back and realize that there was an example of something different, an example of something better. And of course, <laughs> I went home and I listened to what was going on at home and I, I blocked out how good I felt at that um, family reunion with my friend and felt like I was part of someone else's family. And it was this wonderful, amazing thing. And then to go home and just be, you know, <laughs> put all other people's responsibilities put on me that I didn't have and all this guilt and shame that wasn't mine. And it's like, what the heck? I'm supposed to be responsible and in control of all these people that I can't control. It was, it was horrible. And it just made me feel horrible. And I had the choice. And I have the choice now to what kind of family I want to have, what kind of future relationships I want to have. And just very grateful to know that there's something better out there than what I've experienced. And I don't have to continue to repeat the crappy to try to make it better. <laughs> I can just go have something nice to begin with. Um, I can have something better, like my friend who's been running around in an old car that's been falling apart and it's she's having to keep repairing it. And she finally went and bought something brand new 
that's so much better than what she had. And she doesn't have to deal with all of the drama and trauma that she was having with the old car. And I could do that with my life. I can get something new. I can make something new of my life. I can make something different. It doesn't have to be what it was before. I can change that thought process. I can tell myself that I deserve something better. I can work towards something better and I can remind myself that it's okay to have something better, that I'm not hurting someone else because I'm succeeding. Um, and if someone else is getting upset about it, I don't have any control over their feelings and or their jealousy or whatever else it is. And I'm not really the one that's causing that. That's just, that's on them and they need to deal with their stuff. Um, and that's easy for me to say. That's not easy for me to do. And at this point, I haven't had anybody come to me and tell me that I shouldn't write my stories or shouldn't write my books. They're all telling me all these wonderful, fabulous things. And they're excited for me to finish. They're excited for me to publish. All, I have tons of support as far as doing my books and doing my videos goes. But I have those old memories. I have those old thoughts, those old experiences from growing up. And I keep letting those old experiences have power over me and get in the way of my moving forward and succeeding. I keep having that fear that someone's going to come out and be upset by this. And I've even, you know, sent stuff to my siblings and said, hey, is this okay if I write this? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It's okay. And <laughs> even my one sister that was kind of not cool about the idea at first turned, came around and said, no, you know what? Just write whatever you want to write. It's your story. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And I would like, you know, so I'm even getting supported by people that will be in my story. And it's like, okay, so, <laughs> so what is my hang up? And I don't really have one. It's just the fear of, of putting stuff out there, of, of being judged, of being criticized, of not being good enough. Um, and I, <laughs> I take that too much to heart. I take that too personally. I, I, I tell that too much to myself and I need to stop telling myself those things and I need to replace it with the, the positive that I can do this. And maybe that's why that mantra came to mind when I was doing my gratitude list that I am capable of more than I give myself credit for because I can do all the things that I keep telling myself I can't. Like, and I need to stop telling myself I can't. And I don't know that I consciously tell myself I can't. I think it's a subconscious thing that I can't and then I get depressed or discouraged because I'm I'm fighting that internal battle with myself, with my old self to the person that I want to be, with the things that I I learned growing up or that I the way that I interpreted things and then realizing that I was wrong and I need to let that stuff go. And it's it's not easy to make that transition, to make that change, to let go of those things. But I know that it's possible and I know that I've been doing that today and that makes me very happy that I can do that today. So yay. I am, I am grateful for that, but it also means that I spent several hours on the phone in the middle of the night talking to my friends because she's a night owl like me instead of my sleeping, but it was kind of okay because I ended up taking like a six hour nap this afternoon, which I did not mean to do and really just wanted to sleep all night long, which would have meant that I wouldn't read my scriptures and meditationals and I wouldn't make my video. Um, which kind of turned out that way anyway. And now I'm going to bed right before the sun comes up. So I'm going to be trying to sleep during the day again. So my hours are all funky and weird, but I am grateful that I'm sleeping because I wasn't for a long time sleeping for a while there. And, um, and now I'm just sore and tired. So <laughs> my body is like, we need rest. It's demanding it at this point in time that, and I also think my getting out and going to work and doing stuff every day is wearing my body out. So I'm using what little energy I have and, you know, four to six hours of my day. I'm like, that's all the energy I have, but I'm using it. So I'm grateful that I'm, I'm using it, that I'm getting up and that I'm doing things. Um, so yay, there's that too. Um, but that's, <laughs> that's pretty much all I have for today. And I'm sorry if this video is kind of choppy or bouncy and for the random interruptions of things. And I hope that it turned out okay. Cause I still don't know what was popping up on my screen. Um, and that's all I have. So if you like these videos, you can hit like, subscribe, share with someone else if you think they'll like it too. And I hope you have a great day full of gratitude and maybe do some writing.